Hey, what's up guys? I'm Chris Curry, and if you clicked on this video, then there's a high probability you're looking for a new screen recording software for your Mac. So I'm going to show you step by step how you can record your desktop using my software of choice, ScreenFlick. Before anyone points out, I know that you can use QuickTime to record your screen for free. I did try this and ran into one deal breaking problem. With QuickTime, I found that every so often the screen would glitch and this was bad enough to make me look for a paid alternative. After doing my research, I came across ScreenFlick. It does cost $35 and it might seem like a lot, but that's a one-time fee you pay and it's well worth it considering I use it in almost all of my YouTube videos. The tool is extremely easy to use and it's what I'm going to show you now, along with some tips and tricks on how to use it properly. To open ScreenFlick, you can head up to the toolbar in the top right and click Activate ScreenFlick. From there, a small box will pop up in the centre of the screen, and don't let the size fool you. On the ScreenFlick website, they do say that they strive to be as efficient as possible, and that's exactly what they've done here. To begin with, in the Record tab, there are a few different options. If we expand this box, you can see that there are a number of different ways you can capture your screen, and to be honest, I've never used any of them other than fixed screen, and that's likely what you'll be using, but it's cool to know that there are other options available. You can even change your frame rate, which is really helpful and it goes all the way up to 60 FPS. Below this, we have another option to record system audio, but to do this, you need to install a plugin first. You also have the option to record using an external microphone directly into ScreenFlick, which is also a really helpful feature. At the bottom, you have the option to record using a built-in camera, and the cool thing about this is if you turn this on and then decide later that you don't like the way it looks, you have the option to remove this from the final export, which is great to know that none of these settings are final and you have full control over that final export. If we head back up to the video options, you'll notice there's a small box which says show recording areas. This is really helpful for making sure that your screen recordings fit within the correct aspect ratio, especially for YouTube. I'll explain what I mean. Have you ever watched a video of someone recording their screen on a Mac? You may or may not have noticed along the side these black bars. Well, this is to do with the size of the screen. My MacBook Pro has a screen aspect ratio of 16 by 10, which means if I record my screen and then upload that footage directly to YouTube, it's not going to fit within that 16 by 9 aspect ratio. Here's an example of what I mean and how to use it. If we check this box and then press the record button, another screen will pop up. If we set the aspect ratio to 16 by 9 and then scale this up, you'll see what I mean. Now if we hit record, ScreenFlick will give you a 5 second countdown, then start recording. As it does this, we can now see the screen recording area. So if you're like me and you create a lot of tutorials, you can take your software and then adjust it to the size of the screen. And that's everything you need to know about recording, so let's switch over to the export tab. Here I have all my files labelled with a unique project code. This just helps me to keep things organised. If we select one of these pieces of footage, you can now see we have a number of different ways we can dynamically edit this footage. Starting with Emblem, what this does is it allows you to add a watermark to your footage. So here's an example. It's pretty straightforward, you can adjust the size, the duration and the position that the emblem appears. I don't use this but it's good to know it's there. Next we have Keyboard and this allows you to show all of your keyboard events which is really helpful for anyone creating tutorials. You can change everything from display duration to the colour and the position that this will appear. This is a really cool feature and could potentially save you a lot of time if you're looking to create tutorials. Then we have the same thing but for the mouse. So for the sake of this demonstration, I'm going to scale this up all the way. We can then show all of the mouse clicks by adding in a coloured pulse. And again, this is a great tool for anyone creating tutorial based content. On the last tab we have camera, which is what I was talking about at the beginning of the video. As you can see we can choose to turn this off or on, and we have full freedom to adjust the position and size. The last thing you need to know is if you click the settings button above, you can change the quality of the video. It says high is recommended but I've turned mine all the way up to ultra high and I haven't noticed any lag so far. So overall I think this is a great tool and I don't regret paying that one time fee. I hope this was helpful, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you want more content like this. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.